Um, the reasons for atheism, or as I would prefer to say, anti-theism, are, I would say, as follows. The first and the simplest objection to religious belief is that its metaphysical claims are not true. In fact, are false and come from a period that I would describe as the infancy or the, the fearful childhood of our species, when because we have brains that seek for information and seek for explanation, brains that even now prefer a conspiracy theory to no theory at all and are bound to do so, and indeed in some ways a right to seek in this way, uh, explanations had to be found for things that seemed at the time inexplicable. <clears throat> and in the absence of crucial information, uh, we didn't know. We had no way to know that the Earth went around the sun. Didn't know that there was a germ theory that would explain disease. Didn't have any means of knowing that earthquakes were the result of living on the crust of a cooling planet in a rather odd solar system where most of the planets are either too hot or too cold to support life, and our own is in large part too hot or too cold to support it either, and where the remainder lives on a climatic knife edge and always has. Some design, by the way, and that's just of one solar system. Um, we didn't know that uh, matters of this kind, earthquakes, waves, disasters, were not punishments. Uh, it was quite possible to, uh, to listen to those and even to believe those who thought that they could explain. But for these people, a double problem arises. Um, there is first the difficulty of if not the impossibility of demonstrating the existence of any creator or designer at all. I think I say something uncontroversial when I say that no theologian has ever conclusively demonstrated that such a designer can or does or ever had, has existed. Uh, the most you can do uh, by way of the argument for design is to infer him or her or it from an apparent harmony in the arrangements. And this was at a time when that was the very best that so to speak, could be done. But religion goes a little further than this already rather impossible task and expects us to believe as follows, that the speaker not only can prove the existence of the said entity, <coughs> but can claim to know this entity's mind. In fact, can claim to know it quite intimately, can claim to know his or her personal wishes, can in turn tell you what you may do in his name. A, a quite large arrogation of power you will suddenly notice is being granted to the speaker here. The speaker can tell you that he knows, he cannot tell you how, but he can tell you that he knows, for example, that heaven hates ham. God doesn't want you to eat pork products. He can tell you that God has a very, very strong view about with whom you may have sexual relations, indeed, how you may have sexual relations with others. Uh, he can indicate perhaps a little less convincingly, but no less firmly, that there are certain books or courses of study that you might want to avoid or treat with great suspicion. Now, this suggests to me uh, already a design. I think I can see a design shaping up here, and I think I can see who designed it and created it. I think it was man-made. I think the whole inference, because you can certainly see a design at work, is that this is human. Uh, that it was designed at a time of great distress and great ignorance, and that it had an enormous advantage, the design of which can be inferred from every one of its practices. It gives to people, ministers, priests, rabbis, shamans, whoever cell phone that is should know that we know where you live, by the way, <laughs> and where your children go to school. Um, it gives to those people power in the here and now, the only place where it really counts. If you are His Holiness the Pope and you have uh, arrogated to yourself, for example, the power to bind and to loose and to decide who may read what and how many tithes must be paid and how many holy days must be observed, how many disciplines must be followed, uh, are you seeking power in the, in the hereafter or are you seeking it now? It seems to me very obvious, that, uh, inescapable conclusion, that it's temporal power that's being talked about. And of a very dictatorial kind, I might add, an absolutist kind, a kind that is not open to the ordinary challenges. The divine right of kings was something you had to challenge not just at the risk of your life, which might end quickly, though the end itself would be slow and painful, the, the end would be, would be uh, final, uh, but you were told you risked your immortal soul and the rest of your life too. That's quite a powerful instrument of secular discipline. And everyone can name their favorite example, I think, of how and uh, where 
that kind of tyranny over the minds as well as the bodies of men was exerted. We think of it as belonging to our prehistory, but we only have to look oh, as far as today's Iran, for example, to see a classic theocracy, a country from which I've recently returned, where I wondered how to convey sometimes the flavor of what theocracy really is like. Um, well, if you're a woman who gets in trouble with the regime and is, has committed a capital offense in Iran, but you're underage, you're a virgin, you may not be sentenced to death <clears throat> under the law of Iran because the law forbids the execution of virgins. But you may be raped by the Revolutionary Guards so that you're no longer a virgin in the prison and then executed. I think that sort of conveys what people feel they're allowed to do when they think they have God on their side. And I could tell you far worse than that about what the arrogance of power is when it thinks it's backed by, by uh, the divine. Well, this arrogation of power in the, in the material world is really nothing compared to the dictatorship that is suggested by those who infer the whole celestial design that backs it. Uh, that's why I want to uh, spend a moment or two telling you why I'm an anti-theist. You may be an atheist and wish that there was a God who loved you and took care of you. It's possible, um, but just to decide there isn't enough evidence for it. Just as Mr. Jefferson was a deist, uh, but didn't believe in religion. He didn't think God intervened. Uh, these positions are equally compatible. I know several atheists who would happily say that they wish it were true, but that they can't find that it is believable. My own view is that it's uh, very fortunate for us that it isn't true, and I shall say why. If there was a supervising creator who took a personal interest in your life, what you would have from the moment of your conception, in one, at least in one interpretation, would be a permanent, inescapable, unchangeable, unalterable, unchallengeable rule which would involve round-the-clock surveillance and supervision of every single waking and sleeping moment of your life. The abolition of any privacy in your life or even in your mind and your most private thoughts. The most complete form of totalitarianism ever imagined. And indecent, too, when you think of how many private moments would have to be supervised in this way and invigilated permanently. And that would go on not just for the rest of your life, as it would if you lived in Iran, it would go on after you died. In fact, after you died, the real invigilation would begin. They'd only have started with you at the moment when you left this veil of tears. The two offers are, um, at that point, as you will know, at least from all the two, two of the leading monotheisms, either an eternity of praise and servility, everlasting praise and adoration of someone who has only done his job by creating you, hasn't been invited to do so, proposition that sounded more like hell to me when I first heard about it, or a very much more unpleasant one, derived not from the Old Testament but from the New, there's no hell in the Old Testament. There's genocide, there's racism, there's slavery, there's child mutilation, there's all, everything else you could wish for, but there's no punishment of the dead. Not until the, the arrival of the gentle Nazarene is it suggested that for a crime you probably were forced to commit, because after all, you're created a sinner. You're created sick and commanded to be well, the essence of the totalitarian principle. Uh, but for that, you might face an eternity of torture, for, to which there will be no end. Now, I think this is a horrible proposition. I think those who wish for it are wishing for slavery and civility, for the abdication of their own responsibility, for the dissolution of their minds, for the abolition of their individuality. I'm therefore very glad to say that there is no evidence for it at all.